Hi everybody and welcome back. It's a lovely day for a garden tour today. A little bit chilly and a bit of a light cold breeze out but otherwise quite a nice day. It was minus five degrees last night so it's come up a little bit uh, but everything in the greenhouse is fine. The ranunculus is fine and we're going to start the garden tour today by having a look around some of my perennial beds. So the shade garden looks bare from a distance but we have some things that are basically evergreen. There are some heucheras down here. There's two and, oh, something's been eating that one. I guess deer might like heucheras. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on those. There are some hellebores down there and some foxgloves. There is a foxglove. There is one more. These I started from seed last year. And I have never grown foxgloves, so I'm really excited to see those. Here are some early spring bulbs. I'm pretty sure these are snake's head fritillaries. You can see some buds starting to pop up right in there. I'm really excited for these two. I actually planted them a year and a half ago in the fall of 2020, but they didn't bloom. The foliage came up. They didn't bloom. There's some early spring irises right there. They won't be long. The crocuses have been blooming for about two weeks now and the snowdrops have been up as well. Those are just gorgeous. I really love these. And I think that's another little fox club right there next to those. Now these I am probably the most excited about. Look at these. You can just see the start of the flower head in there. These are drumstick primulas. I grew these from seed last year as well. I'm really excited to see those bloom and they shouldn't take long. I have some little perennials here that I started from seed, just starting to come up. There's a couple more right there. I can't for the life of me remember what these are called. It's on the tip of my tongue. If I remember, I'll put it up on the screen. There's some nice yellow primulas. Not drumstick, these ones. These are the more common ones. There's a few more snowdrops coming up through the leaves. And these are grape hyacinths. They look like they've been chewed on as well. more primulas in there. Oh, there's the tag. It says it's a mix. These are all yellow though. We have some lilac shrubs here as well. There's a nice one and then there's another one right back there. And we also have a lot of ferns and hostas dotted in through here. Should start to look really nice and lush over the next four to six weeks. Now this is mostly bare and half of these beds are still covered in a tarp and I'm not going to take those off until I'm ready to plant something. It's keeping the ground a little bit warmer and it'll keep it from getting waterlogged too if we get any heavy rain. There is, however, some garlic popping up. I planted two varieties last year. This is Mennonite garlic and over on the other side of that tag is music garlic. There's a squirrel up there losing his mind about something. Good morning. What are you so upset about? You're disrupting my video. Do you care? You don't care. I guess it's just gonna be very noisy around here today. So ignoring the noisy squirrel, I have a small patch of scallions next to the garlic and we use these just like green onions. You can see all this green growth is new from this year. Temperature's barely above freezing, but it's coming up nicely. I have a small patch in the greenhouse too. I actually moved these and replanted them in the fall and I can tell they didn't really grow as strong in a fruit system because they're popping out of the ground a little bit. Still perfectly alive though. So I'll fix these up and uh, top dress them with something too to give them a bit more protection. Now this is my mint bed. Now it doesn't look like much from a distance but if we come in close, look at all those beautiful shoots just ready to grow. I love that color of the green and the purple when the shoots are young. Well, hello, Molly. Oh, I lied to the squirrel. I guess you are outside. She's 14. She's not gonna climb a tree to go after a squirrel. Now the herbs are what I really wanna look at today. I have these eight raised beds right here. And the first one is not an herb, but rather has elephant garlic in it. And we can see some shoots. There's one just starting to pop up. 
There's another one. The squirrels love digging in here in the fall, so I had to cover it with mesh. There they are. I bet we'll see all of these within a couple of weeks. This one here is thyme, looking a little bit worse for wear, but still has a lot of green in it. And I'm going to cut this back, but oh, I just got a nice smell when I did that. Hmm. Yep, the smell is still there. I need to cut this back, but I'm going to wait until I start to see some new growth. This has gotten a little bit smashed by the snow, but I should see some new growth starting in there. And you don't want to cut back any farther than that, or it might not regrow at all. And this rosemary was looking good up until about a month ago. It's looking a little rough, but oh wait. Oh no, that's time. <laughs> okay, maybe not. I'll probably cut this back though quite a bit and just to see if uh, if the root ball is still alive, I might get something. It is not hardy to our zone though, but I left the plants in there just to see what would happen. Sage is still looking a bit worse for wear after the winter, but it will likely be fine. It's still alive. That's a little bit of new growth right there. And these, these shoots I'll cut back for sure and then we'll likely see, yeah, I can see some new growth in the middle. Yeah, I can see some new growth in the middle, so that's great. These will get a little trim. This one is French tarragon. And this is the same. It looks pretty terrible from here, but let's have a closer look. There's all those new shoots down there just ready to grow. And I'm not going to cut this back because it's still offering a bit of protection at this point. Here are the saffron crocus and a little bit of weeds. So I had maybe a dozen blooms off of these last year. There's definitely more foliage than there was last year, but I'm not getting a lot of blooms yet. Here is the oregano. And I did cut this back last year, but I see a lot of green there underneath the fallen leaves, which I'm going to leave for, as protection just for a little while. Chives are coming back, sort of. There's a few really strong plants here on this side, but not so much over there. I think I see why though. You can tell that I cut back the old growth on this side, but not as much on that side. The soil has also settled a lot, so I have to top this bed up. And then this is not a perennial bed. This is feverfew on this side. So I overwintered these as cut flowers and these were uh, flat leaf parsley just to see if they would overwinter and they look like they did not. So I harvested off of these quite a bit last fall, though, so that's not a loss. So there are the eight raised herb beds. And these beds have not changed since you saw them last about three weeks ago. We have our strawberries, our fall planted lupins and yarrow, which you can just barely see popping up, but there's some growth happening. Nothing in this bed and then the three beds that I seeded with Larkspur. Nothing's popping up there yet, but that is not a surprise. It's still early. So now that my fingers are thoroughly frozen, let's pop into the greenhouse for a second. Oh, there's a heat wave that came out when I opened the door. So I have this shelf that I built out of scrap wood that I stuck behind the greenhouse and I put a little hook on it right there. There to hold this door so that it wouldn't bang around in the wind. Oh, this little bed here has chocolate mint in it and I bet if I move, there's some nice little chocolate mint shoots. Oh, I can smell it already. Hmm. This one doesn't get quite as much sun, so it takes a little longer to warm up. That is winter savory. Just one nice good sized plant. I'll cut that back shortly and we'll get some new growth there as well. Coming into the greenhouse, here are all my more cold tolerant things. We have parsley and one little flat of leeks there. Chives, garlic chives, snapdragons, stock, and scabiosa pincushion flower. There are the lavender cuttings, the sage cuttings some yarrow, two different kinds of yarrow. These are all the cool flowers that you saw on my, um, on the shelf by my patio door last week. The rest of the lavender cuttings. Then we have the anemones, the spring blooming anemones for cut flowers, which are starting to pop up. 
I'm just waiting for them to all break the surface before I plant them so they have nice strong root systems, but they'll be planted outside in a week or two. And I stuck my thermometer in here overnight with the frost cloth over top. So it's 18 degrees above zero down here where the plants are. If I hang this up here where it normally is, it would probably read 25 or so, but we don't need to know the temperature six feet above the ground. I wanna know the temperature of the plants. So that's staying in here. Then we have more spring planted fever few, my eucalyptus and my lisianthus. This is the first year that I am successfully growing lisianthus from seed. Tiny, tiny little things. These grow so slowly worth it though because they are beautiful so I only have a few but that's about all I had last year as well there we have a parsley that successfully overwintered in here and there's the rest of my scallions you can tell there's a lot more growth on these than on the outdoor ones and I was in here the other day I trimmed a bunch of things back so that I could fit all of these plants in here Dusty Miller is looking fine. The rosemary's a little bit rough, but I think it's all right. These eucalyptus here, I'm not sure of, but that's why I have those as a backup. We can't generally overwinter these. And what I should have done is put them on the ground and wrap them up, but I didn't. I left them on the shelf like a dummy. So here's the cat mint that has spent the entire winter up here on the top shelf. It's putting up some really nice growth. Those will be for the seedling sale, as were these. These were late summer chocolate mint cuttings and they're coming to life there's some nice little shoots right there i completely forget what these are i'm pretty sure they were just for me i'll have to look and see if i put a label on them somewhere so two nice ones whatever they are that one's dead and there's another one here i did plant a lot of perennials from seed towards the end of last year to overwinter and then plant out so i probably have a seed packet for these somewhere so there's the greenhouse. So nice to have them out here in natural daylight. And with the door open, they're getting a little bit of breeze too. So it'll be fairly easy to harden these off. Now let's pop behind the greenhouse. Those are dianthus. I have something under here too. Oh, lemon balm. I've got to take these trays out so that that can get a little bit of sun. And there's all the winter sowing. I don't think anything's come up yet. Nothing. So there's nothing growing in those yet, but they're pretty frosty. They don't actually get full sun here behind the greenhouse. So I wanted to wait until the nighttime temperatures weren't too freezing before I brought them out. Well, hello. What are you peeping at me for? I feel like Cinderella out here. You gonna come say hello? No, all right. I have a few white snowberries back there that are just for the landscape. Those were cuttings that took quite easily. And then I have a few herbs in uh, gallon pots. These were just some leftovers from my seedling sale. Some herbs that I planted in one gallon pots when they got too big. Some sage and some peppermint in there as well. These square pots here were milkweed plants that I started from seed midsummer. So, and they sat out here in the elements all winter, so they're still they're still pretty frozen, so we'll see if they come up. I might move them into the greenhouse. Here are the bulbs. Here's the daffodil bed. Those are starting to come up pretty nicely. A few varieties are much bigger than, than others. These ones look really nice. Next, we have the tulips. So there's 200 tulips in only half of this bed. That doesn't look like a lot. I'm already wishing I'd planted way more. And the rest are some other bulbs. There's some hyacinths, some alliums, some hardy gladiolas, and I don't even remember what else. I'll have to find my list. And then here are the ranunculus. Now that it's above zero, I really need to uncover those. So here's the ranunculus uncovered. Still just small, but they're putting a lot of their effort into root growth right now. They've only been in the ground about a week and a half. They've been covered up most nights, but most days I've been able to take the cover off. Once they start growing, they're going to take off. And we should start to see some blooms in about six weeks. 
So we had a look at the winter savory and the mint next to the chocolate mint next to the greenhouse. I also have a couple of sage plants there as well. There is a golden, a golden sage and regular sage right there. That pot is catnip. That's for Molly. There's a few nice little snowdrops coming up right there. And then I have a collection of different varieties of thyme. I have a golden thyme, a silver, I have lemon thyme, which is really nice. And those all need to be cut back just a little bit. And then on the other side, there's some chives. And then I have a few different types of oregano as well. Spring bulbs are coming though. There's more snowdrops and some daffodils starting to come up behind it. Those are some really nice decorative daffodils. So that is basically it. There's a lot of the same things in the front yard. Tulips and daffodils that I have in the landscape. I think a few hyacinths and a whole bunch of crocuses as well. I didn't put any snowdrops in the front yard, I don't think. I did plant a few of those drumstick primulas out front though. And I think some foxgloves as well. So next will be the April garden tour in a few weeks. It should look a lot more lush by then and I can't wait to see what else has come up. Thank you, Mr. Blue Jay. Thank you. No respect. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.